Hello, it's the Finnish Football Show. Yes, we're back again. No longer are we like London buses where you need to wait ages for one to come along. We're now like Tamu Puki goals, prolific and consistent. We <laughs> um we saw uh, saw Norwich's main man chip in with a hat trick yesterday. So uh, yeah, I think mean, that's what's that? 60, 66 goals for Norwich now. Well um I'm joined today by Escape to Swami. Hello, Rich. Hello. And FC saw me. Hello, Mark. Moi. So tonight we're going to mainly focus on the hockey app. We'll be looking back a little bit over the friendly game with Switzerland. And we'll also be putting ourselves in River Canada's our shoes and trying our best to whittle down a list of around 35, 36 players into a uh, Euro squad of, of 23 We've also got the upcoming Helmerich game in Austria to look forward to. But um, yeah, Mark, Rich, Finland travelled to St Gallen for the friendly game with Switzerland last week, coming away with a, a 3-2 defeat. The, um, as we pretty much predicted in the previous show, the, the starting eleven was, was quite different to what we'd seen for the, the previous two games, which were both World Cup qualifiers. Finland lined up with Jesse Jornan goals, a back three, I think it was, of Daniel O'Shaughnessy, Juhani Oyela and Robert Ivanov, a midfield five of uh, Juha Piranen, Robert Taylor, Thomas Lamb, Oni Valakari and Puru Soiri. And we had two up top. Jole Poyampalo was joined by Marcus Force. The, um, the game started with, with Finland having a decent half chance with only three minutes gone when a loose header from the Swiss defender was picked up by Thomas Lamb, who cleverly threaded the ball through into the path of Robert Taylor, who was unlucky to be beaten to the ball by the Swiss keeper. The next bit of action was around the quarter of an hour mark where Switzerland broke down Finland's left after a bit of a, what can only be described as a, a dodgy header from Juha Pirinen. Pirinen tried to recover the situation, but the Swiss player got away with, with quick feet and passed into the path of the overlapping wing back who who flashed the ball towards goal, but Yuhani Oyela did well to, to, to cut that one out. Five minutes later, Daniel O'Shaughnessy fluffed his lines, nodding a header backwards. Swiss playmaker Shakiri latched onto the ball one after some clever interplay the Finland, in the Finland box. Gavranovic slotted the ball past Joranen for 1-0. So, boys, how, uh, how do you feel Finland coped with the uh, with the Swiss threat up to that point? And, and how do you think that... that goal to, to give Switzerland a 1-0 lead could have been prevented? I think it was it's just an unlucky one. I mean, the, the Switzerland came out of the traps pretty aggressively. Uh, I think as, as did we, which was quite nice uh, for the first, first five minutes or so. But uh, as they got on the ball more and moved it around more, they started to cause us a lot of problems. And it, it's, a, it's an unlucky one for O'Shaughnessy because he's been pretty good in the last couple of couple of matches so it was a bit of a shame for him to miscue the header once he'd lost it I think they had it was what three on two inside the box and uh, it was a quick move they moved the ball really quickly and it was a simple finish so we weren't I don't know we weren't coping that well when and uh, with uh, straight from the off I mean um, yeah when you got a player like Shakiri, uh, he's still at Liverpool isn't he? Shakiri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when when you've got a player like him running at you, I suppose this um, it is a bit difficult. But yeah, Rich. Um, yeah, I mean, I I didn't watch the game. I, I watched the highlights, and I think um, again the the fact that it was a friendly and it was the kind of third match of three in a week for both teams, it kind of showed. I think uh, there are elements of there are fringe players still playing for places in both squads. I mean, Switzerland are, you know, we, they don't have particularly world class players but they are a good team they've um, they've generally performed very well in in qualifying and in tournaments over the last sort of 10 15 years so i think it was a good test and again it's just interesting to see how albeit a scratch finland team did against that and you know the 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 third goal was quite disappointing to see um but seeing boyan palo score twice you know it's it's nice to see him get a start get a game and um, you know, he looked quite confident and I think that's what he needed because when he's come on um, or when he's played in the previous two games, he's kind of looked dangerous to a point, but he's still, you know, he had a serious injury that he came back from surprisingly quickly. 
And I think, um, again, it's just nice for him to get a couple of goals. Um, the rest of it, I, I don't think anyone, I mean, even of Nutmeg on, was it Shakiri? That was yeah. more popular on yeah. social media than anything else. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think anyone really came in and, and changed the manager's mind about squad places. I think Evenoff came in and did okay from what I saw, but I, I, I don't know. I think the squad, and we'll talk about that soon, I, I don't think anyone's come in with a last-minute kind of dash for the 23. Um, it's, it's a shame, you know, coming out of it after, I mean, we talked before the game about the, the two qualify results, you know, and to come out of an international break with two draws and a defeat, on paper, it sounds disappointing. In reality, it's slightly better than that. I mean, the, the draws weren't bad results. And, you know, in the context of the grander scheme of things, it wasn't a bad week. I think people came out of it very well. Uh, Pookie's legend continues to grow. Um, I think, you know, on on the whole, it was a, a decent international break. Let's say break, period. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the Switzerland game was... You know, so, someone would have had to come in and play a blinder really to 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 swing it in their favour. But um, yeah, I mean, it it kind of went to form really. I think uh, Switzerland a narrow win and Finland disappointed to lose, really. Yeah, I mean, you could you could visibly see the the sort of I think relief's the wrong word, but joy, satisfaction on Poyan Balo's face when he, um, especially from from the first goal. And, uh, and yeah, when he slotted away the penalty as well. So he's obviously happy to be back starting and back on the score sheet. So, I mean, after after that first, that Swiss opener, Finland had a, had a decent long range effort on 28 minutes after some good, strong play from Poyan Palo. The ball came out to the right. And um, a player player who we might talk about, whether, you know, in a, in a little while, Puru Soiri, he, he picked up the ball, dropped the shoulder made some space and it a cracking long range effort that, that wasn't far away. Um, from the resulting corner, Finland leveled the score. Oni Valakari hit an outswinger that was met well by Poyon Palo. He, he, he climbed above everybody, met the ball with a powerful header that was head, headed goalward and the lunge of Marcus Force seemed to, seemed to put off the Swiss goalie as, um, as Yole's header bounced into the net. I'm not sure if the, the Swiss goalie thought that Force was going to get a touch, but um, yeah, did, Force did enough to put him off, and and ultimately, Yoli Yoli takes the goal. So, I mean, that, that's an interesting one from a purely selfish point of view for, from us. In that, you know, uh, Switzerland's first choice keeper, Jan Sommer, is generally a very high of a very high level. I mean, he's the equivalent to our Kradetsky, and if he's their number two goalkeeper, yeah, you know, bear in mind we talked last week about how Joran and his performances over the last year, eighteen months plus. You know they're a lot closer in quality. If he's their reserve keeper, if I was Switzerland, I'd be worried. But um, yeah, got, but um, yeah, it kind of reassures you sometimes about the level of of your backups. But yeah, that that was a bit of a rick. I I think he was. I mean, he was he was looking at force. So he, he was expecting that he wasn't going to get to the ball before force would, and force was sort of distract them just in front of it. But having said that, it did look a tad. A tad foolish on the on the lad, so it was a bit um, Omlin, I think his name was. So yeah, it, 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 yeah, uh, it was a, it wasn't exactly a powerful header, and I think uh, we were a bit lucky to get ourselves back on terms. And I think also, in fairness, probably a bit lucky to get ourselves in front because the penalty that came le- came next, uh, which was I think it was only like five minutes later, that uh, Onni Valikari won, I thought was it was well played, clever play from the young lad. But uh, if, if yeah, one of those ones, if it gets given against me, I'd be I'd be Absolutely livid. We should just read our WhatsApp conversation about that because I think <laughs> our, our absent co-host, um, I think, it is still of the opinion that you know, had that been five or ten years ago, uh, Valakari might have got a card for diving. But um, I, you know, in twenty twenty one, it's <laughs> yeah. a penalty. So yeah, um, you know, that um, well, yeah, that, that was the topic but, of conversation before before the penalty. Um, you know, there's a uh, pundits. Pundits often say that you're uh, you're most vulnerable straight after you score a goal, and and the Swiss had a, had a great chance straight from their kickoff after after we had scored, and um, Gavanovic hit, hit the post after a clever no look pass from from that bloke Shakiri again. So um, 
yeah, sort of lashed, lashed a shot into the post. A few minutes after that, O'Shaughnessy was caught out by an unexpected back pass from Robert Taylor and Finland were lucky to escape with Joronen getting down well to uh, to save the Swiss effort. Um, it was it was 38 on 38 minutes that Marcus Force latched onto a loose ball and sort of turned on the afterburners, blistering bit of pace. He launched a crossover to his strike partner, Poyan Pale, who, who headed down into the path of the onrushing Valakari. And um, I've got in my notes here, before before Oni could shoot, he was cruelly taken out by the Swiss defender. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if... Uh, um, that's, that's through blue-tinted spectacles, I think, as we just hinted to it, it. The penalty... Well, what do you reckon? You, you've touched on it. There's, it's, as you said, Rich, in this day and age, it's a penalty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he he played for it. It's the kind of thing, you know, like when we said about, you know, showing our English side in 98 when Owen got was Owen got fouled and he clearly won the penalty, you know, even back then it was all intelligence and stuff. I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, five years ago is not a penalty. Um, but this contact in the box, you know, contact isn't always a foul, but... It was enough the way he went down. And I think the angles of the runs and the way where the referee was stood, it, it's a penalty. But if, if that was a, you know, the, the VAR would be looking at that in a big game if it was available. Um, but yeah, I think it's a penalty. Had it gone the other way, which a lot of times they do, we'd have been cursing. But yeah, soft, but it was a penalty. Mark, what are you saying? Yoli, Yoli smashed it away. And he, as I said previously, he, he looked. He looked visibly happy to be scoring goals again. Yeah. So the was, the finish was uh, low and hard, but he gave him the eyes. So I think like it wasn't particularly in the corner. I think it was relatively central, but but the keeper went the wrong way uh, quite early. <laughs> quite quite early. Uh, it was it was well taken penalty. He looked confident when he when he hit it, and I think as well beyond the goal itself, he did like we struggled. Their, their second team is obviously Switzerland's perspective, second team is better than our second team and actually they, they had a couple of like like Shakiri and a couple of others from the first team that that, that got a fair amount of minutes but you, Paul Yampalo was one of the ones who was he was dropping deep to win the ball he was trying to connect the play and he was trying to get up on the end of crosses like when it was uh, when it was his turn so he 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 was really hungry against Switzerland I think he was probably the standout player from the Finland perspective um, but yeah he looked really good he looked really good. As you um, as you said, Rich, the uh, you mentioned it earlier, but the uh, just seconds before half time, the only bit of action that was left was what um, a lot of people are calling the moment of the match when uh, young Robert Ivanov nutmegged Shakiri. The um, Swiss playmaker was visibly visibly shaken by the experience, and he, he didn't even manage to come back out for the second half. So he's obviously thought, I've had enough of that, being mugged off by this bloke. So he, uh, I don't know if, listen, I don't know if it was always the plan for Shakiri to be replaced at half-time. I'm just saying, even off nutmegged him, and he didn't come back out for the second half. So what can you say? <laughs> oh, dear. So yeah, we had we had a few of our own sub. Well, I think the the, the sub at half time was was Nicky Mayenpar replaced Joronen in goals for the second half, and yep. he looked solid at first, saving well from a from a couple of Swiss snapshots. Just um just before the hour mark, the Swiss intercepted as Finland were were building an attack, and and a quick breakaway saw the Swiss race down towards the Finland goal, and after clever footwork from Vargas, he lashed a shot home with Mayenpar rooted to the spot. I think um. I've watched it back and, and Nicky Mayenpar was arguably unsighted as, as one of the Finland defenders attempted to, to block the shot. But we, we, seem to, we seem to get undone by our own trick here, fellas. I mean, um, it's, usually, it's usually us who, who do teams on the counter, but we were sort of patiently building up, trying to, trying to create, build, build an attack to, you know, create an opportunity. And we, um, we got, done on, got done on the quick counter. So it was a bit of... Um, a bit of a taste of your own medicine, but um, yeah, you know, shame, shame to, to lose the goal, but on 65 minutes, there was a, a few more changes. We saw Kamara and Lod enter the game, and then 10 minutes later, Puki and Shula and Alho joined the action. Um, with 10 minutes to go, Finland faffed around with a ball on the edge of the Swiss box, and um, 
Puki wriggled into the box, but it, it, it sort of came to nothing. The, the Swiss got a free kick at there. I wasn't quite sure if that was for a, a Puki dive or if there'd been a, a handball in the um, in the build-up. But Finland were finally beaten on 87 minutes. The, um, the Swiss broke down Finland's right and a, a sort of speculative cross came over. Juha Piranen and, and Daniel O'Shaughnessy seemed to sort of put each other off as the as the Swiss attacker won the header. We had um we had another ch- chance to clear as as Juhani Oyala went up with Seferovic, but the, the Swiss won the header and the, the ball looped into the net. Mindpard made a sort of despairing dive, but I, I don't think you can blame him for that one too much either. He he was probably sort of standing there thinking, don't worry, my defenders have got this. And they had a, a couple of bites at the cherry to get rid of it. But yeah, in the end, that was that was the goal that, that won it for the Swiss. I mean, um, what do you reckon, guys? They, 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 t- I've watched it back. They, I think they need to be they need to be looking at themselves there and, and sort of wondering how they didn't manage to clear that. Really, I, th- I think that'll give that'll give Rive his biggest headache because uh, so uh, after after half time they brought on like four or five players from the, the regular starters and they gave us an absolute hiding. So they, they were all over us and they went bought this Vargas kid looked really quick and they went two one up. We then brought on Lud and Kamara and everything went back to normal because we could start to keep the ball and move it around a bit. And so we did a fair amount of work getting ourselves actually back into the game when it was 2-2. And we looked more likely as the game kind of got towards the end of being the team that would would take the lead. But the 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 amount of mistakes in the in that last goal, particularly from Oyela and from Manpa, it's a it, so Oyela's lost a looping header. For, for, what's he five yards out? He's inside his own six yard box, and the lads just sort of towered over him, stooped more than anything else to get his to get a header on it. And while it's a it's a close range header, it's not far. It's not like in, but he's not buried it in a corner. It's about two feet off the, I think it crosses the line about two, three feet off the floor and about, you know, two feet away from Manpa. And it's a, it, I think both Oyala and Manpa looked a bit, looked, showed, showed their age a little bit there. Uh, I thought, I think Joran, Joran probably saves it. Um, I would certainly Toivio and, and Arayuri deal with the header better. So it was, a, it was a really tough one to concede. And I think if you're looking at the depth of the squad, uh, Rive's probably got a bit of a headache now back there well we, we talk about mind pa. i mean um i think it's we'll, we'll talk about squads in a in a minute but i think it's fair to say that if um if if Radetzky and Joranen are both fit i don't think don't think nicky's getting getting too close to a, to a starting point i mean he, he's um he's still going strong he, he made his debut for um venezia in Serie b at the weekend and they come away with a with a one one so um mm-hmm. Yeah, got himself got himself a point there for his new club, but um, yeah, I'm sure he's he's happy to be back in the in the national setup. But I think it's what is it something like five five years since he's since he's played in in hooker yet? I think it had been six years last week since his last cap, mm. um, and you know, I mean, do we talk? Should we move into squads now, or are we having a break? I don't know. No, we, we can we can <laughs> we, we, we can move we can move straight into squads. We can I'm, move straight into squads. I mean, I mean this, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, it's been that long since his cap, and and he's not played a lot. I know he had a few games for was it Bristol City. He was at yeah. um went to Stoke as yeah. a kind of emergency backup. Didn't play, and now he's in Italy. Um, I, I do get the feeling because Ericsson didn't play last week, and my umpire played ahead of him, and with Yakala injured and has missed the last couple of squads. I know that the previous one was paternity leave, but um, I have a feeling that my empire is kind of like a company man. I think they like, you know, he's the FA's man. He's very loyal. He, you know, he, he was called up to the previous squad without a club. I mean, and I, I just get a feeling that, you know, he's got a lot of international experience, albeit quite a while ago when he was the number one. I, I, I get the feeling that, really he'll be the third keeper in the squad as that kind of say safe pair of hands but he's the experienced one and he's not raw he's he's out, not really got the touch but i think he's kind of the favorite as that you know company man we'll say 
The question is, though, Rich, is he your third choice goalie? We'll see you in a minute. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah, um, but I, I, I do tend to agree with that. I think it, it's a, it's such an odd one because when he picked, I don't think anybody was expecting Ericsson to get called up. Nobody was. There was no like there wasn't a great campaign for him, and there wasn't really like anybody saying that you know he's, he's he should be he's he's earned it. But once he's got called up, and you're into this game that that is the first meaningless game we've had in a, in a couple of years, you got to think. Well, this is surely the time to see if he can. You see how how he can hack it. See what he's like. Um, but. Um, but yeah, but he didn't. He went with he went with Manpa, uh for for Jordan and at half time, and I thought that that's when I thought, ah, oh, okay, that that's the writing must be then on the wall for uh for for the other for the other options because because he's gone. With, it's, 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 like he's not played. I mean, Nicky's not played in you know in how many years? I mean, he, I mean, not only is he, he's not played in six years for Finland, but he's not he didn't play last year or the year before. Like re- he's not played regularly since he left Holland, I think. I think there's the, talk about, hmm. Sorry, Virchko. I'm sorry. So, there, there, was, there is always like a kind of wild card Vakehouse Liga keeper, normally the, the yeah. keeper of one of the teams who is always seen as kind of, oh, they'll. I think last year it was Vitala and uh, yeah. Otso Virtanen before that when, when Cooks won yeah. the league. And there's always kind of one who seems to be the outstanding Finnish goalkeeper in the league. And very one, you know, the the kind of track record of Finnish keepers is probably stronger than any other position. And, um, you know, Ericsson's in Sweden now, obviously played in the training for a week and didn't get a call. Um, you know, I mean, Kaneva knows mine by inside out and gave him 45 minutes in a friendly. So, I don't know. I think that that's... Whether he's the third best goalkeeper, I, I doubt it. But I think for the squad as that kind of old head and you know he, he's not going to be a he's not going to be an unknown quantity and he's going to be very happy being the third choice goalkeeper in that squad as would I because it's the best job in football <laughs> well, <laughs> sure is. yeah apart from kit man <laughs> the, um, I mean you, you when you when you're picking these squads which um, I'm going to ask you to do in a minute but when you're picking these squads you've also you've also got to consider the um, you know the support network, the morale, the, the you know that sort of the, the the team spirit vibe within the squad, haven't you? I mean, if Mar and Pa is the man who can who can be like you say, Rich, the old head around for the other two, Joranen and, and Radetzky, the, in that goalkeepers union, who they can sort of look at for a little bit of experience, and um, not that they, those two are not experienced enough, but do you know what I mean? Like if 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 he if my empire is almost their their third choice goalie, then it kind of makes sense. But um, we've still got we've still got another another meaningless friendly, if you can call it that, against the uh, the old enemy Sweden, arranged for the 29th of May in 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 Stockholm, and uh, and then it's on to to the business of the Euros. So they got Estonia still... after that, isn't it? Yeah, Estonia as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he has to name the uh, a, at least a provisional squad before the Sweden game. Um, yeah. So he's going to have to... I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly the date for the final squad, but he's going to have to have uh, at most 27, 28 names on paper by the time the Sweden game starts. Yeah. So, yeah, we've... Um... We've decided to uh, to put ourselves in in River's shoes, and uh, we're going to discuss who, who we believe will be on the plane to take their place in the squad in in this historic tournament that's coming up in in a, in a few months' time. We've got a list of around, I think it's thirty six players that we've that we've had a look at. So um, players who have been in and around the national team squad over the recent fixtures, as as well as a few names who have featured previously in. Um, in the last eighteen months, two years or so, um, and we need to we need to get this down to twenty three. So, um, Rich, I was I was chatting away. We were all chatting away on the on the FFS WhatsApp, and I was arguing that I might it, I might only take two goalies just to try and fit in another outfield <laughs> player. But you 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 quite rightly reminded us that it's UEFA rules that you got to have three goalies in the squad is is there any other rules we need to consider before before we make our selections um no i think it's quite open i, I mean again that they even they wouldn't risk saying you've got to have 
ex defenders and Y midfielders and stuff. I think it's literally of the twenty three, you've got our three specialist goalkeepers. But um, other than that, it's fair game if uh, if Finland decide to turn up with uh, twenty two Tamer Pookies. Only days. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Bones. nice. Hmm. <laughs> Oh right. Well, let's let's go for it. Who's um? How, how do you want to do it? Should we should we look at look go through positions? Look at goalies first, or do you want to yeah. do we, do you want to tell me who's who? Should we do by position? Might be right, sounds good. Yeah. Um. I, I I think my my goalkeepers are pretty set. I think um. I mean, you've got your your first two, Fredetsky and Yorin, and streets ahead. Absolute streets ahead of the rest. Um. And I I I, I will say my bar for the third choice because he is he's the safe ish but he's he, uh, as you say you know around the camp around the squad um he's not a new you know you're not you don't want a lot of people in there with single figure caps he's been around squads i mean he was the first choice goalkeeper in the the miracle of hee um mm. you know he was mixu's number one really wasn't he so um yeah. you know he's uh, I, I i i can't see anyone but him purely for more than the goalkeeping side. I think he is there for a bit of balance and just that, you know, what else he brings. And and, and like you put, pointed out, I think uh, it does seem an awful lot. He's happy to play that position and assisting the two ahead of him. You know, there's not, let's be honest, there's not going to be a lot of competition. But if he's there and if he can get an extra 1% out of one of them, happy days, good choice. So, Mark, um, do, you, do you agree with that? Or are you going to you gonna go with... Carl Johan Eriksson or or maybe even Ansi Jarkola. Yeah, I was going to actually I was going to go with the Jarkola. So I, only because he's a couple of years younger than Mampa and he's playing regularly at Bristol Rovers. I know it's Bristol Rovers, which is League One, uh, but he is playing. And I, I've always I, one of the reasons I like him is that back when he was when he was a lot younger, he had a sort of similar career choice to to uh, to Manpa, and he decided to go and play in South Africa for Ajax Cape Town, which was a massively unpopular move, and there wasn't really anything in it. But he got he got regular minutes, and he won a couple. He won a he won a trophy or two out there. Uh, and I thought that was the, that's the kind of move that sort of shows that he's the kind of player that, that wants to, you know, that wants to be involved and that it gives, you know, 110%. So for me, I'd, I'd go with Yarkola over, over man, but just for the, for the age and just because of, I think I've always, always liked him. It was close. I, I do think Vitala, if it was, if this is, if this had been like a year ago in regular time, I'd have gone with Vitala, but I thought Veiko Stega last season, he, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't too hot. So just based on the form, I'd go with Ansi. How about you, Keke? So, obviously, the um, first two take care of themselves, Lukas Radetzky and Jesse Jorinen. And um, my third choice, my third choice was Jarkola also, just because he's, um, I get, I totally, as I said, I, I totally get the, the Manpa argument, but um, I went with Ansi Jarkola just for one of the same reasons as you, Mark. I think he's, it is Bristol. It is Bristol Rovers, but he's um, he's playing. He, he had his he had his problem with his injury, but he's um, he's playing. He played at the weekend. He's getting minutes. Um, mine passed mostly mostly on the bench at, um, at Manitia. So yeah, so that's that's my three. But I think we're we're we're, we're pretty much with the first two. You can't you can't grumble. You know what I mean? If you if you, I don't think we've got anything to worry about if either of them are, are in, in nets for us. So, um, so yeah, that's 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 that one nailed down. So uh, yeah, moving on, we've got I've got a list here. Of, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Got about 15, 15 or so defenders or defensive-minded sort of players. So yeah, Rich, do you want to let us know who, um, oh. who makes it to your squad? No pressure. Um, well, I've got seven definites that I reckon. I, I mean, a lot of them are easy. Toivio, Ariuri, Urunen, if he's fit, O'Shaughnessy, yeah. Raitala, Oyala. Um, I've got Hamalainen, I think, as um, as the left-sided cover. Um, I mean, Urunen has been injured. He's had COVID. He's been suspended. He's been sent off. Um, but Hamalainen, in the last six months has really impressed. Um, he looks a lot more suited for wing back. Um, mm. And if that's the way that, that, that they're heading, I think as a wing back, I think he's probably better than Oren and it seems a lot more. Um, 
and then I've got sort of question marks next to Alho. I think he's not played brilliantly, but he seems to be the kind of, he's almost got the ear of the coach. And I think as a, as a backup to Reitala or however they decide to do it, um, I mean, he's, I, he's definitely not first choice, but I think, again, he seems to be the man with the shirt. And I think he's, he's not done brilliantly. He's not done dreadfully. He's had a couple of good games, a couple of mixed games, a couple of bad games. But I think I, I, I'd be surprised if they left him out at this point. And I'm, well, that's eight, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You done yourself already. You, yeah. you got it down to seven, and you've taken eight. Oh, no. yeah. Well, I've well, got a question mark. He's got a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> question. Go on, then, so Mark. we put a half. We put a half down for Alho then. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Davio Arayuri are, are nailed on. Um, O'Shaughnessy's nailed on. I've got then uh, Uranen, Hamalainen, Albin Grandland, and Alho. Just ahead of Raitala, so it's it's Alho and Grandland on the as, as right wing back options, or Hamalainen and Urnen as left wing back options. So no Birinen in there, and then I've got uh, Leo Leo Weisenen, but not Sauli. The um, the Weisenen brothers are an interesting one because they both both had pretty nasty injuries recently, so um, which has kept them out of recent squads, obviously. So. I don't know. It's um, it's a tough one. Do do they become the the forgotten men almost? You know, after putting in such such great efforts to sort of get us in the position where we are, and then to sort of to to not even make it onto the plane would be devastating for them, I'm sure. But it's um, you know, there's there's a lot of decent players in there, isn't there? I mean, some unfortunately, someone someone does miss out, don't they? I mean. Does the fact that they've they've had these injuries and that they've not been playing football worry you at all? Yeah, I, I mean you can't. It's, it's easy to forget. Maybe it's just me and I'm getting old. But you know we're, we're already into April. Um, the domestic seasons are coming up. You, you know they, they're creeping up surprisingly quickly. We're only what, nine weeks, I think, now until the the start of the tournament. Um, and again, you know this is the conversation we had beforehand about kind of the heart over the head in that, you know, they, they've both played a lot of minutes at various times in the qualification campaign. But, you know, you know really, it's difficult to know. And, you know, we've, we've kind of run out of time, really, to test them in the international setup, unless one of them maybe gets a one of those kind of standby provisional places ahead of the two friendly games. But, you know, they, they'd really have to go some to prove it now, I think. I mean, they are good, though. I think they are quality. And I think yeah. of the two of them, Leo is going to get he's going to get games in in Sweden. And and I, I think I, I was just thinking that, you know, Arayuri Tovio O'Shaughnessy is your centre back. So you need another, you know, you need another like centre back that's there. And, and I, after after the after Raitala's performance in the last sort of round, I thought he's probably not he's probably not the smart choice so I'm going to back Leo to get fit and, and hopefully play and get himself back into form you don't fancy but Robert Ivanov I thought he did I thought he did really well you know I, I you know I thought I genuinely thought that like uh, out of I think out of anybody that just got into the squad you know he did the, I think he did them he went his stock went up the most he's put himself on there but but I think it, that's one game against Switzerland which we lost so it you know he played well but it's not there's not enough there I think to, to to go at the minute he's close though. So I've gone with um, yeah the obvious two, Paulus and uh, Toivia in yeah. in the middle there. Um, I like I like Juha Pirinen simply because he I think I think he can do a job in a couple of positions. So I just think you know he he can he can act as sort of left sided cover in in the defence. He can and he can he can play in in midfield if he has to. So um, yeah, I'm 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 putting Birnen on, on the plane. I'm I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big fan. Um, Albin Granlund, if he manages to shake off his headache, I think he's um, he's he's a definite. I think he uh, he needs to go. Um, 
Who else have I got? Daniel O'Shaughnessy. I think you've got to take him. He's uh, he's the up and coming, up and coming defender. So he needs to go. I actually like Uranen as well. I think, um, mm. yeah, I think he's a, uh, I think he's a good shout. But uh, but then you can't you can't leave out Hammerlinen, can you? I mean, he's um, he's playing at a, he's he's had a couple of bench games recently for QPR, but he's playing at a decent standard. As um, as you said, Rich, he's the, the you got the old the the wing back scenario, and he's he seems sort of made for for that um, that position. So um, yeah, lot, lots lots to think about there. I'm glad my name's not Rivek Adam. I know that much. <laughs> it was it, yeah, it was it was it was uh, this was actually really, like a really hard like thing to go through to get through the list. So you you're only going with seven defenders. Yeah. So you're not going to take Oyala, and you're not going to take Alho. Al Alho, I I, I was going. My my Yuhani Oyala is he's highlighted in yellow here, which is a sort of he's got one foot on the plane, but <laughs> Al, he hasn't yeah, checked in yet. No, but Alho, I was I, I don't know. I just I just think he great going forward. I just think he gets done. It, uh, at the back, you mm. know. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably changed my mind. No, it's, it, it, it's true. It, it, it's true. I think it's just the only thing I was thinking. I mean, well, you, 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 the only thing you've got to think about is Granlund is thirty-one, and I don't know. Like, if he gets another knock to the head, then who else? Who is? Yeah. Who's, who's? Who's? Who's dropping Ooh. in at right at right wing back? That's a tricky. One. Although Sorry did really well against Switzerland, so yeah, you've got an option there. I think fine. the thing. Seven's the thing. The thing is, I think. It's difficult, you know, it's like we're playing a game, aren't we? Um, and with the goalkeeper thing, it's difficult when you work out. You don't see a lot of what he's playing behind the scenes. And, and I mean, he seems to... I had someone email me last week going, oh, so are Finland still going to play four four two at the tournament like they did in qualifying? But probably not, you know. He seems to have gone away from it now. Um, yeah. Because football evolves and, and that's where a lot of teams seem to be going now and um, I think now you've got to look at you know having a backup centre half and you've got to be looking at players who can play wing back and have that pace and you know Alho has been for me anyway that kind of, I mean he's not been the <laughs> a standout performer but he does seem to be very much in the coach's thinking for the for the position so that's why I kind of penciled him in um, but I think yeah he's um yeah, I, I'd take him as that kind of eighth defender. <laughs> question, question mark. Oh dear, this is murder. Right, so let's quickly move into midfield then, guys. And um, yep. now we've now we've sus got the defence sussed. We can <laughs> we can move into midfield. So uh, Mark, you go first this time. Who um, who makes it into the midfield for you, mate? So there's some, big, um, there's some big there's some big shouts here. You've got to, this is some more heart and head I, stuff, I think. I yeah, I did. I yeah, this one was a real like uh this one was it's a diff it's a difficult one, but okay. So I'm gonna go with Spav, Schiller, Lod, Kamara, Soyri, Taylor, and then Freddie Jensen if he's fit. Which leaves out which leaves Kauko. out uh, no, yeah, Kauko's there. Don't say Kauko. Kauko is in. But what it leaves out is uh, Niskanen and Valakari. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. But I've got it's. I thought it came down to Robert Taylor or, or Oni Valakari, and I've been, I was flipping a coin all day. So, how many's in? Go on, say that again. So it, Spav, Schuller, yep. Lord, yep. Kamara, yep. Soyri. Kauko, Robert Taylor, and then Freddie Jensen. Patrick Jensen. Right. So you've got rid of, of Ilmarin Niskanen. He misses out. And Oni Valakari yeah. misses out. Yeah. And we had... Um, do you remember our old mate, um, Lassie Lappalainen? He was he was in and around there for a little while, wasn't he? Yeah, I do like Lassie. Yeah, he's really like... I don't was, like I'd... him that much. You've left him at home. <laughs> well, there's a lot. I mean, is it you know? He, he, there's a lot. He's like left. He's one of those guys who, who suffers from this. It's like a bit like Burusari. He suffers from the three-five-two. I might actually. I wonder if I, I might make a change. I, I might. I think I picked. Yeah, I picked Alho in the back. I might drop Alho out and then bring 
knee scanning in so he can play right wing back. There you go. <laughs> okay, I've just uh, I've just updated it. Alho out, knee scanning in because I liked it. I thought it was good. <laughs> okay, Rich, who you got? Um, so I I put Jensen as a forward um, yeah. purely on that. So he's he's in my forwards. Um, I've got Kamara, Spav, Kauko, Lod, Taylor, Soidi, Shula, which is seven. Um, I was kind of again Valakari is my question mark. Depending on on that, I think um, those seven. Um, Soidi again, he's again he's got the ear of the coach. I like him, but he can't. I, I think he's he's there for what he can bring. Although he's not had a lot of chance to prove it in the last um, last few games, um, Kalko is has been superb in the last certainly since since the autumn. Schuller, uh, we, we've had this conversation, but he's he's going to be on. He's going to be in the squad, so it's not up to me, is it? Not my game. Um, and I think Taylor brings enough when he plays if he's played in the right position. And Robin Lord, I've been a massive fan of for years. I think he's, yeah, nailed on how how he fits, whether it's as a ten or I know in a, when they played as a four in the midfield, he he often played sort of nominally as one of the wide players drifting in, but as a ten, I mean as a ten, he's great. But um, so again, he could be a forward. But I think that, that that's my seven for midfield. I think Niskan and that that train has sailed um, with his transfer, unfortunately. Um, I, I just I, I don't see anyone else really on threatening there. If, you know, we're, we're going to have to play wing backs, so you're going to have more defensive minded players. So I don't see anyone who's more of a midfielder playing in that position. So I thought that, yeah. that, that that was a bit easier for me. That one. The next year, the next guy knocking on the door is Thomas Lamb, and I think that he mm. he did all right against Switzerland, but but didn't set the world on fire. I think he's one of those ones who could eventually turn into a, to, to, to the kind of guy that would fill the sort of Tim Sparb role, but he's not, he's not been at it that much uh, recently. So I, I tend to agree. He's, he's, cl- he's probably the closest out of the guys that are, are, aren't there, but uh, he's not close enough. I, think. Yeah. I mean, he was only called into the squad yeah. late for this one. So I, I mean, he, he went through a big, quite a long phase of being, in the squad, not necessarily starting, but he was always on the on the list, wasn't he? Well, well he was. I mean, he was that kid that uh, Litty picked him out uh, from training mm. back, like when he was a twelve year old. And I think, he, like, like he, from the age of about eighteen, he was getting caps and playing regularly in Holland. But I think it was what was the move to Forest that that really knacked him. Yeah, he's back, yeah. back in Holland now with Zwolle, isn't he? Uh, mm. in, is it oh, here? Uh, Alkmaar. Oh. He, he was at AZ Alkmaar, yeah. I think it's Zwolle now, where he's at. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zwolle, Zwolle or two. So, have you, is uh, did Valakari not make it onto your list then? <laughs> he's, he's, he's my question mark. I kind of thought, um, depending on who is in the front, the front group, because, um, again, I think if you've got Lud, Taylor... As that kind of more attacking midfield, the Valakari, you know, because I mean, he played, was it the Bosnia game? He started nominally as a number 10. Mm. Um, so again, it's kind of, he, I, I think he'll probably go, um, but I, I don't know. When I look at the squad, I don't mm. know that he, I think he'll go. It, it's a really tough call between him and, and like Freddie Jensen. Like Freddie Jensen's mm. a, um, He's he's a more he's a more predictable player in a sense, and he's a, he's a bit sort of bigger and stronger. I think you deal with it a lot better. I think Valakari is like a bit of a sort of wild card, uh, but I think um, it's a, it's that's a tough it's a tough thing to get it down at twenty three when you're playing when you're playing the way that we play because he's more of a if we were going there with that four four two, I think he'd have a good shot at one of the wide players that white like the wide attack can burst. But I think with, with the way we play at the minute. Taylor's been more recently has been more uh, versatile in the middle of the pitch, so I think he's probably going to get the nod. And I think Jensen played as a centre forward in the first was it the Ireland Nations League game, and I think he or when he came on anyway, it was as a forward, and he scored mm. ridiculously early on the, on his sub appearances, and and I think if he's fit, 
I, I think he's there yeah. uh, as and probably as a forward. But mm. I think. Um, but again, I, I, he, he's yeah. another he's another player who can fill a couple of positions. He's he's quite yeah. comfortable in midfield and quite comfortable up front. So again, yeah. he's he's sort of that 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 goes to his benefit, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the old Kieran Dyer actually, thing on Championship Manager, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, not to uh, Paul Warhurst, not to give too sure. much away, but he was in um, he was in my forwards as well, Freddie Jensen. But so yeah. for the midfield, I've gone with um, the number one man, Yoni Kalkoff. Tim Sparv, obviously. Uh, Glenn Kamara, again, obvious choice. Robin Lodd for his creativity. And then when it um, comes down to it, I've, I've chosen Rasmus Schuller because I think he's yeah. he's a bit of a utility player. He can... Um, he, for, you know, for see, I, don't, I don't think he'll start, but for seeing the game out, a bit of fresh legs, trying to, you know, can hold on to the ball a little bit and, and, yeah. and run the clock down, I think he'll do all right there. Um if like if you know if we need to to go a little bit more defensive, I, I think he can he can help out there in midfield. Um, and then I've also gone with Robert Taylor. Uh, I just think yeah, he's got he's got the skill, he's got the creativity, and so um, poor old Oni Valakari misses, misses misses out for me as well. But um, yeah, it was it was super super tough. I mean, um, I think I think. I think Soiri goes just again. He's you've got to look at the players when when you need a little bit of magic. I think I think Taylor and Soiri are the ones who can who can give you that that little bit of magic. I mean, um, yeah. So it's uh, we'll wait and see. But that's um, I wish I could just take all of them to be honest. Yeah. But um, so you had Sparv, yeah, Sparv Shiller, Lord, Kamara, Soiri, Kauko, Taylor. Yeah, I had all those same players. same as mine. Uh... Yeah, but um, yeah, it's uh, so we'll see. It remains remains to be seen how the uh, how the top man goes with it. But um, so yeah, out of the forwards, we've got so I listed the the following forwards for us to choose from: Tema Pukki, Yoel Poyampalo, Marcus Force. I put Freddie Jensen up there in with the forwards. Then we've got Yassi Tuominen, who's um, carrying a bit of an injury, I think, at the moment. Um, Rasmus Karjalainen. And um, our old mate Simon Scrab, who was uh, it was it was knocking on the door a, a little while ago, but um, I'm not sure not sure he's made it onto anyone's list. But um, Mark, who's who are you who are you going with up top? Well, I've got four spaces left, and <laughs> uh, and, and and Freddie Jensen's already in it because he's my utility sort of forward and and uh, midfielder. So Puki and Pohyan Palo are nailed on. I also think Force is going and, and I like him, which leaves yeah. me with one space. And I'm gonna go with Rupe Risky. <laughs> because it's a World Cup, because it's a final Unbrand. tournament, and you need you need a guy who can just like every tournament has that guy in the squad. He's, he's a classic sort of Ian Wright style pick, right? He's a good finisher, he's still quick, he's still banging the goals in and you go. So I'm going Rope Risky as my as my fourth. Buki, Pohyan Palo, uh, Force and Rope Risky. Done. There you go. Exclusive. <laughs> we have to get on the phone to Canada after this. Get him back. Get him in. <laughs> Rich, any surprises in your uh, your um, line? I mean, we, we jested offline before we started recording that um Eremenko, Roman <laughs> Eremenko. Uh, it's weird because he when when did he get his ban? Was it 2016? I think it yep. was when he got his coke ban. So he's not played since then. And yet, you know, like he whenever his name comes up, Caneva seems, you know, he won't say no. And even now that you know, we don't even know which country this man is in, he might <laughs> be in Finland. So since he left Rostov, it's mm. believed he moved back to Finland with his family. He's not popped up anywhere. He's not been spotted in heat or anything like that. You know, no one knows where he is. And yet there's still this kind of, well, it's almost like a, a sort of jilted lover. It's like, well, if he calls me, I'm interested, you know. Um, because the weird <laughs> thing is, is, you know, despite being, and I can say this, there's, there's no allegedly about it, coked off his tits. He was playing brilliantly. Um, yeah. In Russia, he's played, he's been very effective in that period, he's not been playing. This Finland squad benefited massively from him not being there. And yet, 
his name is still bandied around. And I know, you know, there's all these jokes that, well, Lippmann hasn't fully retired, has he? Yeah. I mean, the man can barely walk. Of course, of all the people in all the world to get COVID, it completely destroyed him. By all accounts, a year later, and he's still not well. Um, but I, I mean, I think because I worked out, I've got five spaces left if I take Alho as a defender. Mm-hmm. And I've got Puki. I mean, I, God forbid the person who tries to query that. Um, Poyan Palo, I've got Frederick Jensen as a forward, yeah. Marcus Force, because there's enough there. I think it's, yeah. I mean, he's not a known known quantity anymore, but he, there is enough there that he can do something, whether it's off the bench or whatever, well, more than likely to be. But I think there's, some, there's something there that if he comes on with 10, 15 minutes to go in a tight game, who knows? Um, and after that, I've kind of got one space left. And I don't know. I mean, maybe that's where I put Valakari as that kind of... <laughs> but again, that, that's where I kind of left it. Because in theory, I don't know. Because of all the players who've been on that fringe over the last two or three years, none of them are playing particularly well. I mean, you talked about Lamp- Lapaline and Kalialine and... Scrab, um, yeah. you know, these players who've come in, had a few caps, not really done an awful lot. And I, I think that's the position. If he takes, I mean, he takes four strikers, that's it. I mean, you could, then you, there's probably a case for Valakari as, as your wild card, almost a midfielder. Because, I mean, do, does this Finland side need five strikers? But, you know, because again, Valakari, there's enough there. He's scoring enough goals in the league. That might be my justification for taking him because he's in form. Mm. And, and, and well, I think as well the, the important thing to say is that Yasito, I mean, it is it looks like he's not going to come back like sure. anytime soon. So the the bit the space that we're, we're talking about should, you know, like again, this was this was in normal time a year ago, it would have been Tuomi in space because he was actually mm. kind of partnering Puki up front and doing a he had, was working a pretty good foil for the for for Puki. It was starting to be a good partnership. So it's a bit, Bit of a shame that he doesn't get there, but leaving the space open for so so Rich, Vekas Liga kicks off first ten games. Eremenko comes back for Hifki and hits ten in ten, eleven in ten, all worldies, all half of them free kicks. Is he in your squad? Whether he's in my squad or not, well, I think Canerva would pick him. Hmm. I think yeah. if he comes out yeah. and plays regularly and scores a few goals, I think the manager would genuinely consider it I you know I, I I think I mean obviously we all know what a quality player he is and we can have a good idea of you know I mean, we talked at length about how suddenly certain players leave the squad to retire and there's there's enough changes that you know Hetamai's gone Moisander's gone you know and and Eremenko's gone all of a sudden this team seems to gel um I, I think you know it, that manager Really, if he really didn't want him, he would have said it. He yeah. would have said that door is closed. But he's whether whether he's just been clever or not, I don't know. But there just seems to be a lot in what he says when because there's all that question's always put to him in press conferences about Aramenko. Hmm. And it would it's not boring because he keeps answering them in these really sort of cryptic ways. It's almost like, well, I'm I, I'm in if he's in. And it's just kind of like, oh. Oh, no. Listen, if you're having Ruperuski and you're having Roman Eremenko, <laughs> then I'm having Eero Markkanen. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he, listen, he, he's, he's in California getting, getting himself a nice suntan and he's going to start smashing goals in for Orange County Football Club, right? So there you go. It could happen. It could happen. I hope it does. I really hope he get. I hope he gets back into into form. And uh, yeah, I, yeah. I suppose. I suppose if 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 the other options are risky in Yeremenko, Aero Markkinen's not not that crazy a shout. I, I did. Yeah. I did explore last night on Twitter if um, the two lads who plays up front with Norwich with Puki, if they've got any Finnish relatives. Is it Cantwell and Buenda? <laughs> yeah, Buendia. Buendia. Um, any luck? Buendinen. I'm still digging. <laughs> I'm still thinking. Yeah. I'll get my passport, don't I? Yeah. Maybe if we send off for um, some ancestry DNA tests for them and see if they come. come Just feed them some salmiaki beforehand. Yeah. 
Oh dear. So yeah, I, mean, I think um, I'm not quite sure how many, sp- how many spaces I've got left. But big, yeah. big plane, isn't Temu it? Puki, Yoel yeah. Poyampala, Marcus Gors, Freddie Jensen, and Erra Markinen. There we go. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Um, we're gonna. We're, what year was it? We're gonna do a Greece and, and and lift that trophy. I can feel it. Two thousand. That was two thousand four. The pirate ship. There you go. That was amazing. Yeah, we could do it. We could absolutely do it. Oh, I haven't shown you this yet. Got myself a sticker book. Look, it was in my first packet. Oh, nice one. Nice. Well, if I sort our swaps out. That's it. So see. that's our that's our that's our squad list done. I think, boys. We. Um, I'm sure the, uh... between us we've got between us we've got probably 18 19 dead certs and then I think there's there's always a, there's always a question mark and I do wonder you know will there be at least one that everyone goes what when that squad nest comes out but yeah yeah you know, I, th- I think 18 19 is about right I think if you look at the if you look at the the squad there's probably about there's one I think I think like one keeper space is up for grabs for sure. I think there's one or two defend centre back or, or defensive positions up. I think you've got three nailed on forwards, and then it's one or two, depending on how you break down the midfield and the and the uh, striking options. So I think yeah. I think that's about right. And so the Sweden games. Sorry, I was just say, um, you know, we, we've also got the caveat that these players all fit. Um, yeah. yeah. Sparv's just had knee surgery. Jensen's. Injury, uh, yeah. Uh, th- there, there'll be someone who, hopefully not, but the odds are someone of that list will miss out because of an injury they've picked up. Um, you know, it'd be unfortunate if it's anyone particularly key, but there are a couple of players there who haven't played as much as they should have because of an injury. Um, so, hmm. fingers crossed. So yeah, I was just going to say, Rich, as you said earlier, the um, the Sweden games arranged for the 29th of May, and you reckon that the the provisional squad at least needs to be uh, announced before that. I, I think there there is a cut off date that before that Sweden game yeah. um, that they have to have a, 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 a at the very least a provisional squad named. Um, I think there 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 are. There was like a final date, and I think there's a, a particular um, cut off where if a player is injured before the start of the tournament, you can replace them. Mm. But again, that's that's kind of a, a caveat, really. Yeah. So there we go. I think um, I've gone, Mark. No, I was just going to say it's not not really related, but I think you did you tweet today, Rich, about the Irish FA. Um, well, uh, Gekko shared it, but um, yeah, there's um, so the Irish FA have apparently said that they can't guarantee because this was what we talked about last week about the yeah. the federations have to guarantee a particular percentage um, of crowd. the the stadia have to have yeah crowd in, and I think Ireland have turned around and said they can't guarantee that. And also, um, I think there's talk that one or two, I think Spain was one, and there might have been another where they, they're not quite so confident. So, I mean, the thing is, is it's going to be too late to arrange a new one. They'll almost certainly just lump their games in, probably at Wembley, let's be honest, um, which would be a shame. Mm. If I can get to you. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so you'll need your passport and then your COVID passport. <laughs> yeah, of which I've got neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so the, the squad um, list yeah. has to be the squad list has to be done ten days. The final squad has to be done ten days before their first game. So that's before the Estonia game, but not right. the not the Sweden game. But I think they have to have a provisional squad before the Sweden game. Before the yeah. Cool. But yeah, we'll um, obviously as as this as this news um, comes out, we'll we'll be across our social media channels, putting that out for everyone and um, letting them know what's going on. And if there's any, I mean, this news about where these games are actually going to be played is obviously still well up in the air. We don't know. We don't really know what's going on. But uh, again, as soon as we have any sort of information or any rumours, they'll be. They'll be across our, our social media channels and we'll let you all know as much as we know. But I think, um, 
yeah, as far as our as far as, far as our squads go, that was uh, that was good fun. I think um, when uh, when River Carnival listens to this, I'm, I'm sure I think he's a subscriber. So once he listens to this podcast, podcast, I think we've given him a couple of bits to think about there. So um, so yeah, good luck with that. But um, yeah, if it's, uh, we've we've still got our one of our, our regular features, despite our our mate producer Mark not being with us, we've still got our regular feature. Um, Yasila Sipoli and um, our, our man Mark has come up with a, a new phrase for us today. So, what what we got this week, Mark? Yeah, so yeah, it was it was it was it was I think trending for a little bit in in, in Finland when the uh, qualifiers qualifier games on the World Cup qualifiers run. It's Ruosta Retki, uh, which is like a, Retki. Yeah, yeah, like literally, it's like a raid or a pirate raid or something like that. But it means when you when you go in somewhere to nick a point or to nick three points. Oh, the opposite well, of parking a bus, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It um, kind of rolls off the tongue, that one, as well. I quite like it. Sounds a lot like Rikuriski. Yeah, that's my <laughs> oh. first thought. Oh, dear. Quality. Well, um, yeah, if there's, uh, unless anyone's got anything else, I think, um, I think that's us. Yeah. So all that, all that remains to be say is... Um, Thanks for listening. Don't forget to uh, follow, like, and subscribe wherever you, you hear the Finnish Football Show podcast. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, just search for the Finnish Football Show and, and we'll pop up and you can give us a follow. You can also follow us all individually on Twitter. Rich, you're at? Escape to Swarmy. Mark, you're at? At FC Swarmy. I'm at Kekamulleri, and our um, absent friend Mark Wiltshire is at Explore Finland, where um, not only does he, he keep you all in touch with what's going on in the world of Finnish football, he's also uh, looking into the wider world of Finland with his Explore Finland podcast. And he's, um, where was he the other week? Ice, ice fishing or ice swimming? or <laughs> Earthquake tracking or whatever. Yeah, earthquake, yeah. <laughs> not not quite Twister following, but yeah, <laughs> looking for earthquakes somewhere in um, Pohjanmaa there. But um, yeah, so so give Mark a follow as well. Um, remember that Helmerit have a game coming up versus Austria this coming Sunday. And um, fingers crossed, hopefully we'll have our interview with Emma Koivisto that um, myself and Mark Hayton did a few weeks ago. Hopefully we can get that into your podcast players to coincide with, with the game on Sunday. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. It was uh, brilliant. Good good to talk. And, um, yeah, thanks a lot. So, Rich, see you later. Moi, moi. And, Mark, thank you and good night. Hello. Moi, moi.